Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back uh, to the lecture series in bioenergy. So, from today's lecture, we will be shifting gears. So, if you just recall back where we started, we started with the basics of the energy, then we talked about the fundamental concept of bioenergy, where we highlighted that biomass plays a significant role. Next, uh, from there, we went ahead and outlined the biomass production system in the form of uh, photosynthesis, the most fundamental reaction on the floor of earth, which is driven by the incoming solar radiation or sunlight or as a matter of fact, any form of light, it is a light driven process. And uh, there we talked about the complete photosystem and how the starch and sugar molecules are being formed. So, Today, what we will do from the basic mechanism, now we will see the output of it and from there, what are the strategies which are being followed. So, just in every lecture as I generally do, in the beginning I kind of give you an overall capsule or kind of you know what you are expecting from this lecture and the subsequent lecture. So, today also we will start like this. So, we have already seen incoming solar radiation leads to photosynthesis. So, on the floor of earth as well as on the ocean, land, ocean, water bodies, everywhere there are formation of biomass. So, what we will do first, we will classify the biomass depending on their origin, are they from growing in the water, are they going in the land in the land what kind of uh, forms they are, are they in the form of forest or they are in the form of cultivation of grasses. From there we will narrow down like you cannot use every crop for bioenergy or for biomass production. Okay. Then we will talk about what are the features what we look forward among this wide area of biomass which are formed and along with I just uh, missed out one thing. We will also talk about in the first fragment, what are the bio waste in the form of crop residues, manures and everything which could also be utilized which are byproduct of uh, biological systems which also could be utilized for uh, bioenergy production. From there we will enumerate all the features what are essentials for us to select. Say for example, say A to Z, this is the total type of biomass which are formed on the floor of earth. Now, that does not essentially mean from A to Z everything could be used. We choose certain of them, some part of them, some fragment of it based on what is the fundamental basic what we have already studied in terms of their photosynthetic efficiency, in terms of their carbon capture potentials and there is one thing which we have not discussed is in terms of their cellulose content in the form of starch content. So, what is, so again that is directly related to the photosynthetic. Okay. Now, what will be those features which will govern that? And from those features, we will narrow down to what are the critical points, what we are looking forward in order to use them for harvesting fuels. Okay. So, this is in subsequent lectures, this is what we are going to talk. Before we enter and enumerate all the different routes, thermochemical, chemical, biochemical, the different routes of conversion. Okay. So, so let us start today by enumerating the different forms. Okay. So, coming back to the slide now. So, if we talk like this is our solar sun which is the ultimate source of our energy. 
So, through photosynthesis, process, what we are generating, we have a wide range of biomass production system. So, these biomass, now let us first of all do the classification of them, biomass production systems, okay. And uh, so, let us classify the biomass production system. So, the biomass production system could be classified as the first classification would be the woody plants, which is whose source could be either the existing forest, it could be a forest wealth, deciduous forest, coniferous forest, there are a series of them. For deciduous, I am putting D, for coniferous, I am putting C. Similarly, you have herbaceous plants and grasses, herbaceous plants and grasses. So, this could be wide coverage of grassland. So, the natural grasslands, okay as well as cultivated grasses, okay. And they could be further classified by another mode, which is actually very significant for us, which is based on the moisture content. So, they could be either high moisture content, high, so the arrow, upper arrow showing, upward arrow showing higher moisture content and they could be of lower moisture content, okay, lower moisture content. And uh, some of the examples, what you can think of in that line, higher moisture content maybe something like you know sugarcane and some of these crops. Further, these could be also classified, this category could be further classified, I am just boxing this category, herbaceous plants and grasses could be further classified by another way, which is if we talk about the energy crops, okay. Then we are having starch crops, which includes your corn. So, this is all those cultivated one, wheat, barley, okay. Then you are having sugar crops. Sugar crops include cane and cane sugar and beetroot, uh, uh, sorry beet sugar, I am sorry, it is beet sugar and you could have forage crops. The most prominent is alfalfa and several other grasses which are grown as a, just for your information, one of the major grassland research institute in our country in India is IGFRI in Jhansi. Indian Grassland and Fodder Research Institute, okay. Then we have the oilseed crops including mustard, soybean, sunflower, safflower, okay. So, these are the different energy crops, starch crop, sugar crops, forage crops and oil seed. So, these are the other set of classification how you can classify this part. Now, apart from it you have another set of classification 
which falls under aquatic plants. Okay. Aquatic plants includes either it could have marine origin or it could have freshwater origin. If it is a marine origin, the major chunk is marine algae, diatoms, these are the major sources and other marine green species. Okay. In the fresh water case, you will have algae, water weeds and water hyacinths. There are many other, I am just taking few examples. Okay. So, the freshwater algae, water hyacinth, and you are having water weeds. Okay. So, this is the third category. Now, let me just circle them. So, this is the woody plants, this is herbaceous, this is the aquatic plants. Now, there is a fourth category in that and the fourth category is the agro waste and the manures or forest waste. Okay. Agro forest waste manure and other you know human excreta and everything. Those are also source of could be utilized for energy production. As you know, most of you know the gober gas and all those kind of thing where cow dung is being used. Similarly, there are different ways by virtue of which you can use this kind of waste. This includes waste, waste like you know the burned crop residue or the crop residues which are left, they are burnt. They could be instead of burning, they could be utilized for different kind of processing for production of energy. Okay. Now, coming back where we were to the slides. So, these are the agro and the forest waste and manure. Okay. So, this is overall if you see the classification where we stand as of now in terms of the different. Let us summarize the woody plants, herbaceous plants and grasses, aquatic plants, agro, forest, forest waste, then you have the crop residues to add up on that and processing them. So, this whole biomass production system is either used for electricity production and heat, heat energy one aspect. Second thing is for transport fuels and third thing is chemical feedstock. Now, having said this, that these are the different usage of it, this brings us to a different kind of situation. So, situation is this. Now, if you see electricity and heat, transport fuels, chemical feedstock. So, these are very different requirements. So, these different requirements need different kind of chemical composition and different forms of uh, crops which could be utilized for this specific purpose. So, now what we will do, let us enumerate what all are the features of the crops which are selected from this. So, now say for example, coming back to the slide, if you see through this, so there is a wide array of things, but then which one we should pick up? which one are significant for us because you have to always realize this whole system is not exclusively for producing energy. This is also our primary source of food. So, there is always a trade off. So, try to realize this point. Say for example, there is a land which is traditionally used for production of rice or any other uh, production system. But all of a sudden, if we make a policy change, we say no, we are going to use this for energy production, then there will be a compromise. So, there will be a shortage of food, whereas you will have excess of energy. So, 
we always have to ensure there are two things, two interesting points which has to be talked about here. So, first thing what we have to talk about is what are the strategic aspects which always have to be taken board in mind before we really you know think in this direction. First thing what we have to figure out is that what are the let us enumerate what are the drivers and then we come to it drivers of biomass productions other than of course the natural light and other sources. So, there are three key, key drivers one driver is the technology for low cost biomass production ok. Technology for low cost biomass production. So, here it is very critical when we talk about the low cost, low cost biomass production, we have to take it into account that we are not utilizing the land which is already been earmarked for production of food grains, because then there will be a very stiff competition, there will be a shortage of food grains as compared to energy crops. So, there has to be a very conscious strategy by virtue of which we ensure that if there are fallow lands which are not being used or you know degraded land where you can grow certain crops which will harvest rich energy benefit, we should use those lands or we can use the water bodies. We have the whole ocean bodies out there. If we can grow stuff in saline soil or there are alkaline and saline soils which does not promote any growth of any kind of crops. We have fallow land, we have waste land you know. So, we need a very conscious thought process before we really you know verge into that direction that what is the trade off are we doing? Are we really utilizing the existing land which is used for mankind? Especially this is very very significant for a country like India which has a very heavy population density and one of the highest population in the world that we have to be we have to make very clear cut choices that what really are we looking forward to. We cannot afford we do not have so much land that we can afford to have a lot of energy crops growing all over the place because we have to feed the timid millions ok. So, this is one very interesting thing that is why he said technology for low cost biomass production comes with a lot of trade off you may have a low cost, but then you have to ensure that that low cost thing works in places where you know there is a tug of war for the land resources or other option is that if we have vertical farming, we have a stacked farming for these kind of energy crop. Small location we have a stacked farming, we have some somewhere or other we can give different kind of light sources if possible ok. So, there are a lot of food for thought that how we can really make a difference without compromising the food production ok. So, this is the first driver coming back to the slide the second driver in this whole process is the provided this is provided and this is exactly linked to the previous one provided we have surplus food or surplus food grain. This is very very critical that we should have surplus food grain, so that we can do a trade off between. So, this is the trade off zone ok. Now, third in this line is the threat of greenhouse there is huge greenhouse problem which is picking up or accumulation of lot of CO2 because of lot of industrial processes. So, these three are the key driving force in this direction which at points we have to make conscious call. 
Now having said this, this brings us to a, another level of uh, kind of a conscious choice. So the second conscious choice is, are we going to use the old biomass or are we, are we there to grow newer and newer biomass? What does that mean? So when each one of us were born, we inherited this earth with say x acreage of coverage of earth with plants, trees, algae, sea resources and everything. So that is a fixed amount with which, which is changing dynamically over a period of time as per nature's rule. But then we cut a forest, we cut up a forest, we either use them for furniture or burn them. So what we are essentially doing that x amount of acreage what we inherited, there is a reduction into that. Okay? So we are increasing the CO2 in a process, so unless otherwise and mind it the problem is this out of that x acreage how much you have cut, how much you have removed by deforestation or any other process, one has to keep in mind that that forest will not grow so fast as the rate with which you have depleted it. So it takes you one month to deplete a forest, a part of the forest, but it will not take a month really to you know regrow those plants. So essentially what is happening, you are, have actually generated more carbon dioxide than what you have captured. So there is a carbon budget. So one of the ways is this, so there is a word which comes called old biomass. old biomass and new biomass versus new biomass. So the old biomass is what I am telling you that there is this what you have inherited at the point and the new biomass is that is where the catch lies. So what kind of new biomass we will look forward to because this is very important that we continuously grow newer and newer biomass because that is the only way we will, be to, we will be able to capture as much carbon as we are thinking to capture and convert it into the carbohydrate. So that is only feasible like this, but if we keep on cutting this old biomass, replacing this old biomass will be a tough deal and especially those who are involved in forestry and all other, they know how systematically they cut, a, cut the number of trees and replace them. So there is always a maintenance of a log record, log book that okay, if we cut this much, how we are going to cut them, how we want to get rid of them, wh when we should get rid of them. So there is always a growth pattern which has to be monitored and this monitoring cannot be done at a very small level. This has to be done at a very global, at the government level, it has to be monitored that you know there are systematic deforestations which are being done. It is not that it is any crime or anything. It is done in a very systematic way because there is a whole range of mathematics which goes through it that this part of the forest will clear it up. So there is other part already grown by other trees and how they will grow, what will be the height and there is a huge dynamics in computational forestry what people does and how they decide. But this comparison or this link up between old and new biomass and how they have to be handled has to be done very, very carefully. And second thing, whenever we talk about this new biomass, this new biomass has to be ensured that where are we growing them? Where are we producing them? Because this is what will bring you to the previous point what I made. Are we compromising on the food grain production lands? Hope not because then this is not going to help us because then a part of our population will be starving. Okay. So these are two critical points which has to be kept in mind when 
each one of us starts thinking about that biomass is the future. Yes, it is the future, but it has to be handled very, very carefully. We cannot do a random walk here like, okay, do this, do that. Likewise, it will only lead to a very haphazard situation. Okay. So, keeping this in mind, what we will do, now we will go for what are the kind of crops which could be, you know, selected out of it. We will resume from here in the next class. Okay. Thank you.